Ski Okunfo, he's going to break down His Majesty Prince's. It's a big, big task, Prince record. It's a big task, yeah. What? I'm well, hoping I can remain faithful and, you know, yeah, we'll honour we'll him. See. No pressure, yeah. No, no pressure. Uh, and later on, we've got Alex Banks from Monkey Town Records. He's going to deconstruct one of his tracks for us. Um, so, yeah, give, first of all, let's give it up for Ski Oakenfall. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a deconstruction. I'm not sure if anyone is familiar with uh, these type of things. I've, um, there's quite a few on our uh, Point Blank YouTube channel. Uh, it's basically where we kind of take apart a track and reconstruct it. And I'm going to talk a little bit later about um, how that works and why we do it and uh, what a great kind of educational tool it is. But first of all, I just think we should get into some music. Um, and before that, I think we should look at some facts, some fun facts about the track. So it was released on the 18th of February 1987, 29 years ago, if I do my calculations correctly. Um, a long time ago, it's amazing for me how fresh it still sounds. Uh, it came out on Paisley Park, which is Prince's own label, which went through Warner Brothers, uh, who he famously fell out with. Um, the engineer was Susan Rogers, um, who apparently is the one that knows about all the tracks in the secret vault. Um, it, got, it was a US R&B and hip-hop number one, very successful, and it was written on a Sunday, which uh, apparently is, was Prince's favourite day for writing tracks. So. Uh, yeah, just a few facts that you might even have some more, I don't know. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a listen to the track, a bit of the track, not the whole thing, and just remind ourselves what an amazing tune it is. So here we go. This is the original video as well. Chances girlfriend came across a needle and soon she did the same. At home there are 17 year old boys and their idea of fun is being in a gang called the Disciples High on Crack, toting a machine gun. Okay, I'm gonna do a fade now. There you go, sorry, a bit abrupt there. But uh, so yeah. Fantastic track, um, and let's just talk a little bit about the key features, production features of the track. So, as you can hear, it's a very sparse, kind of minimal sound. Uh, you could you could hear when uh, when the verse came in, when Prince started singing, he just dropped the bass out. You know, he wasn't afraid to do that. Um, and but the, the the bass line, when it does come in, acts as the main hook of the track. It's a very very distinctive, melodic bass line. Um, there's some great kind of bluesy guitar that he plays on it. Uh, obviously, you know, I mean, he was. Not less Prince tracks. He loved it. He was a big fan of kind of tuning the clap down and uh, experimenting, putting flanges on hi hats and stuff. But he really kind of got the most out of this drum machine. And then, which is something that I found out before, I, uh, well, when I started researching the track, is that pretty much all the sounds are created using a Fairlight sampler. Now, this is one of the first samplers that uh, came out, and uh, Prince actually bought it from this guy. Todd Herriman, uh, who worked in the local music shop, sold it to him for $35,000, I think. Um, and Prince actually got him into studio to kind of help him use it, because he just didn't know how it worked. So um, it's one of the first samplers. I mean, you can imagine how thrilling it must have been to have this kind of technology in the studio. Um, not only did it have an amazing uh, kind of factory sounds it came with, but you know he could sample stuff with it as well. So. Um, yeah, so Prince, you know, that's kind of a little bit of history behind, uh, behind the track. Um, so now let's just quickly talk about what is a deconstruction. So this is, as I mentioned, it's where we take apart the elements of a track to understand them. So it's a great educational tool to teach music theory uh, and also production techniques as well. Um, and we use well-known electronic tracks to illustrate the various aspects of music composition, such as keys, scales, chords, bass lines and structure. Um, it's a very immediate and practical way of teaching, uh, so students don't have to get too bogged down with scales and uh, you know stuff that kind of if you if you are lucky enough to have had piano lessons, 
as a kid, or maybe you were forced to have piano lessons, you know, you know what it's like when you had to sit down and kind of practice all the scales. It's not that we're bypassing that, but we're trying to contextualize it and make it more fun and interesting. And, you know, I, I, I imagine a lot of you guys are into electronic music, and that's kind of what you want to get stuck into and be making. So, um, and you can also, you know, learn how to use your ears to apply those techniques to your own music. And it's ultimately not about copying what someone else does, but finding your own sound. So uh, it was a technique that I used um, with the first course that I wrote uh, uh, for Point Blank, Blank, which is called EMC, Electronic Music Composition. So let's put that in, just close that up. And uh, we're going to use step recording for this because it's just a one bar pattern. So uh, it's very easy to do. I'm just going to hit this pad here. And um, I hope you can see that actually um, from this GoPro. But it's just scrolling through uh, the 16 um, parts of the bar. Uh, and I'm just going to put in, I've got accent on here as well, which means that the pads that I hold down are going to go at maximum velocity, 127. So let's put this uh, kick part in. Here we go. And just to mention as well, we're at 99 BPM. So now I'm going to go for the cabasa part. And uh, I'm actually going to take the accent off because there's uh, two different uh, accents uh, for this part. So let's just put this in here. So by taking the accent off, the pads that I've um, put in are going at 100 uh, velocity. So if I now hold down the accent, you can see that these are in pairs. So the first of each pair, I'm just going to um, hit, and that's going to make it 127. So you can hear there's already kind of a bit of a feel that's created from that. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, add a bit of swing. Um, so give it a bit of feel. So I'm just going to hold down the quantize uh, button there and just dial in a bit of swing. Not much, maybe like 10%. There we go. So I'm now going to hit duplicate, and that's going to create a new clip, uh, which we're now going to add another element to, which is the snare. So stick the accent back on. There we go. I'm going to hit duplicate one more time. This is all going to make sense as we uh, get further down the track. And then I'm going to put the tambourine part in. There we go. So if I just shoot over to the session uh, mode now, session area on push, uh, we've now got these three clips, which are uh, on the three different scenes. So I can basically switch between all three of them. There's the first one. So it's very similar to a conventional drum machine with step recording on. You know, you can create different patterns. You can do uh, exactly the same thing in Logic Pro with Ultra Beat. Um, it's a very, very sort of classic way of building up uh, different patterns. 
So what I'm going to do now is uh, just do a bit of housekeeping. So I'm going to look at these uh, clips now in the session area, and uh, I'm just going to give them some different colours. So I'm going to give this one a yellow colour, and give this one a green colour. There we go. That's very similar, doesn't it? Let's make it a bit more green. There we go. And uh, I'm going to name these as well. So let's just call it beat one, beat two, and beat three. So I'm now going to shoot back over to Push. And uh, there's a sort of recent update which actually allows you to copy clips, duplicate clips within Push. So um, I'm going to do this so I can build up the different sections. So the first one, I'm going to just uh, copy this beat three down. So I'm going to click, click uh, hit duplicate. Um, press the one I want to copy and just put it down there. There we go. And then, because I don't need that one anymore, I can actually delete that. So then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to copy it here. Do that again. Copy it here. And then this one, copy that here. There we go. So um, now I've got all those spread down across uh, eight different scenes. Um, so we, I've done that. Um, now, one thing I'm going to do this that will make a bit more sense later on uh, is I'm going to apply something called legato to these uh, to these clips. It's one of the features of Ableton Live is the clip man manipulation. Um, now, if you can see up here, uh, it says one bar. Now, this is the kind of uh, general quantize uh, for um, Ableton Live, which means that when you if you hit a clip here and then you hit the next one, it won't switch to the next one until another bar. Um, but with legato on, it will actually uh, switch like midway through the clip to whatever quantize you set it. Um, and <coughs> this is because with this track, when we go from one section to the other, we actually want the snare, which is in, in this clip, to happen just before the start of the next bar. So uh, I'm just going to select all of these. Uh, let's just click on one so that so it comes up. There we go. And I'm going to click on Legato. So that's actually applied it to all the clips. Um, and you can see that the quantization is set to global. So that's going to be one bar. But just for beat two, uh, I'm going to set it to half a bar. There we go. And then that will make sense to you when we've got a little bit further down the line. There we go. So we've got those. We've got the beat sections in. The next thing we're going to look at is the riff. Now this is a um, great part of the track, very distinctive. And uh, I'm actually going to go back to. Well, first we'll talk about the uh, the sound that we're using. So I mentioned before that it was a Fairlight, and uh, I'm actually recreating these sounds using this fantastic plugin, this UVI workstation. And it's something called a dark light, and it's there. It's a recreation of the Fairlight. It comes with a whole bunch of uh, some of the original factory sounds, and they sort of modified them as well and made them a bit, bit nicer. So this is uh, this is one of the factory sounds, and I thought that it'd just be fun to just recreate the environment of the of uh, the production of this track by just using this plugin for all the sounds. So um, this is uh, a sound called popcorning, and. That's the original sound, and I've added a delay to it. There we go. So I'm going to put that part in now and uh, start building up the track. So I'm going to add the same quantize swing to this. Okay, so I'm going to copy that down uh, to uh, all the different scenes here because this riff goes throughout the whole track. So uh, I'm just holding down Alt here and just copying these down there. Uh, I could probably do it on push as well, but uh, I'm just doing it on here for the moment. So, so the next thing we're going to move on to is the bass. Um, now, like I said before, this is a very sort of distinctive uh, melodic part. And uh, this is where we're going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, the actual um, key of the track. Because you notice I put that part in, but we just didn't, <laughs> didn't discuss the key at all. Um, so uh, let's just bring up, I've got a little diagram here. Here we go. So key. Um, what is key? 
Let's bring up this. So most popular music has got a tonal center or a key, which is based on any of the 12 available notes on the keyboard. Um, so if I just go here, we've got those different 12 notes, okay? And the most common scales are a major scale, which is ultimately a very kind of happy sounding scale, or a minor scale. And these can all be defined by a formula, um, which is basically the distance between each note. So the distance between this C here and uh, this note here, which is just one uh, semitone up, is one semitone difference. So we call that uh, an S. If it's, um, I tell you what, I'm going to do is bring up the keyboard because it's going to make it a bit easier to see. So here we go. That's a semitone interval. That's a tone interval. Um, so those are the basic, the major and the minor scales are the, the most common scales. Um, now this one is essentially in C minor, but it's slightly, slightly different. Um, it's actually quite got quite a bluesy sound to it. Um, so if we just play the standard uh, C minor scale, it's got three flats. This is an E flat, that's an A flat, and this is a B flat. But the difference is, it's actually got a blue note, uh, sometimes called a worried or altered note. So, and that's kind of, um, he, he, well, in, within, within this track, certainly, um, Prince kind of alternates between this note and this note. So, and you can hear it in the bass line because he's basically going. So let's put, let's put that part in, and you can see how that works. Um, I'll just hide this for the moment, so we can, we'll come back to this in a minute. Uh, okay. So this is another sound from the UVI. Um, I'll, show, I'll demonstrate that in a minute, but let's just put this bass line in, and I'm going to use the... I'm going to use the pitch bend. So it's actually kind of going up to that, but I'm just pitching it up. So let's put this in. Whoops, let's just start again. Uh, made a bit of a mistake there. Here we go. Sometimes happens. See that actually uh, some of the notes are slightly too long, so I'm just going to bring those back uh, just in this piano roll here uh, because they're just cutting off the start uh, of the preceding or the uh, the, the subsequent note. So uh, let's just check. There's another one there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we've got that in. Actually, I'm going to just apply a bit of that swing quantize as well. Uh, so we've got a bit of that in. So let's just uh, copy this down. This is where we're really starting to uh, build up the, the different sections of the track. So I'm just going to copy that to that one there, then this one down here, and then this one down here, and let's put that there. Now, there is another bass line, and this comes in the kind of middle section of the track, but um, I'm going to get to that in a minute. But what I thought we'd actually put in the, uh, the chords or the pad chords of uh, the middle section uh, first, and then we can add the bass line afterwards. So uh, just quickly, I think I just forgot, just going back to uh, this bass sound, um, this is actually a combination of the UVI which is here, uh, but I've also given it a bit of bottom end um, with an analog device as well. So without that, it sounds quite thin, but with the two together, it kind of gives it a bit more weight. So let's go to the pad now, and again, this is another UVI Fairlight sound, really lush. Now let's just bring up the keyboard, because this, uh, goes to a new chord. So let's just uh, also bring up, here we go. So essentially, 
for the verse section, we're just in C. But then for the middle section, we go to an F minor 9 or F minor 7 chord. Now this is actually we call the 4 chord. Uh, and we can define uh, the chords by uh, the degrees of the scale. So uh, this, is, this would be our 1 chord because we're in C and this is our tonic here. This would be the 2 chord, 3 chord, 4 chord, 5 chord, 6 chord, 7 chord, and then back to the 1 chord. So we would say that we go to the 4 chord here. Uh, and then right at the end, it goes to the G, which is the 5 chord. And this is one of the most common chord sequences around. It's the 1, 4, 5. It's uh, sort of the fundamental of, uh, of blues. So um, I'm going to put this in now, and then we'll uh, add the baseline afterwards. Okay, so here we go. Go back to the bass now. to that as well. So you can see on session view now, uh, there's actually a little bit of a structure that we're starting to build up. And um, what I normally do at this point is look for an a cappella. Now, unfortunately, uh, <coughs> there was no Prince a cappella available. I mean, uh, uh, it's very hard to get hold of a lot of kind of Prince things anyway. Uh, but <coughs> certainly there was no a cappella. So uh, I thought, well, I just have to do a little bit of searching around to see if I can find anything. And as luck would, ha would have it, I did actually find something. So um, let's have a listen to it now. Uh, I found this guy called Karaoke X-Ray. And uh, <laughs> he's a bit disconcerting because you can sort of, it looks like you can sort of see into his head. But he's, um, he did an a cappella. And I thought, it's actually not too bad. So let's just have a little quick <laughs> listen to that. In France, skinny man died of a big disease with a little name. Not sure. By chance, his if he's listening to the track at the same the time or what? Soon she did the same. At home, there were seventeen-year-old boys, and there I do fall. He's been in a gang called the Disciples, high on crack, and toting a machine gun. So there we go. Um, full respect to uh, to Karaoke X-Ray. Uh, so what I did is I, uh, I took that, extracted that uh, vocal and um, put it into uh, Ableton here. And uh, let's just play it. Let's go back to this section here. There we go. And uh, I used a plugin called um, Melodyne. Uh, actually, here it is. There we go. And I went through it and just did a bit of tuning on it, basically. Um, it, in the middle section, he, he sort of went up a semitone, so I had to sort that out. So, uh, a skinny man died of a big disease with a little name. But not too bad, I think. I think it's kind of passable. So, um, what we're going to do is this, uh, we're going to try putting that into session view now. So, I've actually put those into clips already. So, I'm just going to drag those over, uh, and then we can actually start listening to uh, the track in bit more of its entirety. So there we go, I'm just dragging these over. That's the last one here. And we can start playing the track. So I'm going to go over to session view now. And uh, let's just go through, we can go through those different scenes and uh, build up the track. Now this is where the legato mode is going to work. If I hit this key here, which launches the next scene, 
just before the next one starts, here, you can see that that snare came in. So that's where legato really worked. So let's bring in the verse. Hear the bass is out here. Again, legato working now. One, other, one extra part we need to put in here, which is this organ sound. And uh, for this, I actually used uh, an M1. I couldn't find a similar sound on the, on the dark light. Uh, I did try, um, but this is the sound. So let's just put that in, uh, and then we can uh, move on to uh, listen to the middle section. Hurricane and Europe, the ceiling of a church and killed everyone inside. You turn on the telly and every other story is telling you somebody died. You'll still take care of them because you couldn't afford to feed it. And we're sending the people to the moon. September girls and dragging them for the very first time. Excellent. So let's move on to this section now. Oh, it's June. Oh. Time. And now we're coming up to this middle section. There we go. Uh, that's pretty much the track. Uh, obviously, uh, I didn't have a guitarist uh, because that was that's quite a major part of the track. But uh, this is how we can use um, a deconstruction to analyse a track, show the structure. We've got the verse section and we've got this middle section. We looked at the chords and uh, yeah, it's a really great way to actually kind of demonstrate the track. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you've got any questions, we're, we've got to kind of move on to the next one. So I'll be hanging around. So please come up to me and ask me anything. If you want to know anything more about the music composition area of Point Blank, then uh, yeah, please ask me a question. But thank you very much for listening.